We begin tonight with that story out of New Mexico State and those hazing allegations. Men's basketball head coach Greg Heyer and his entire staff still employed by the university, but they have been placed on paid administrative leave. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Natasha Paloma. KTSM 9 Sports Director Colin Deaver is here. He joins us with the latest information surrounding that investigation. And Colin, these details, they're just so sad, so disturbing. What is next for the program? Well, Natasha, I first want to show our viewers this timeline that we put together. The biggest events of the Greg Hire era thus far, getting hired in March 28th, 2022. July and August of 2022 are when these alleged hazing allegations uh, began, which do include sexual misconduct. Two, three players pinning a player down in the locker room and touching his genitalia for months. That began in July and August has continued until now. August 6th, a assistant coach was arrested and fired by NMSU. October 15th, of course, a fight at the UNM NMSU football game involving the Aggies basketball players uh, with some UNM students. The deadly shooting involving NMSU's Mike Peak uh, on November 19th, with, uh, which was the uh, alleged uh, alleged revenge shooting for that fight at the football game. And then fast forwarding to February 10th and February 12th, when the season was inevitably canceled because of those very serious hazing allegations, which we've gone through in our shows for the last few days. The WAC has ruled NMSU's remaining six games forfeits today after the school canceled them all yesterday. Now, I bring all of that up because even though there's different players involved in some of these events, it's all related to the culture of the program fostered in the last year. I spoke to 10 former NMSU players and coaches who are at NMSU from 2017 to 2022 today who said nothing like these hazing allegations happened during that time frame, and that's where it uh, would then fall on Coach Hire and his staff. There have been many questions about their job status ever since they were placed on administrative leave on Friday, and it does appear that the school may have grounds to terminate, terminate his contract for cause. Now, Hire's contract stipulates that he has a duty to monitor institutional control and program management, including supervising the program, both players and coaches. Per his contract, there's 15 ways NMSU could terminate him for cause and two stand out. First is this the failure by coach to report any violations known to coach of the rules or university policy rules or regulations by assistant coaches, students or other persons under direct control or supervision of the coach. A second way it could happen is this a serious or intentional violation by coach or any other person under his supervision and direction of any law, rule, regulation, constitutional provision by law or interpreter interpretation of university, the conference or the NCAA. Now hazing is against NMSU policy to say nothing of potential criminal charges that could come from these allegations. The NMSU Board of Regents have a closed meeting tomorrow to discuss personnel matters. We don't know if that is about the basketball coaching staff, but even if it is, uh, even, it, even if it is, they are not able to terminate someone in a closed session. It must be done in an open session. However, NMSU Chancellor Dan Arvisu does have the right to terminate a university employee on his own if he chooses, and he may have said it all yesterday when he said that the program is in need of a reset. Natasha. You're reporting on this. We continue our team coverage. KTSM 9 News reporter Shelby Cap is live from Las Cruces. And Shelby, at this point, what we know so far is the victim is not pressing charges as of yet. So what happens now? Yeah, Natasha, I did speak with a defense attorney here in Las Cruces, and she told me that it's technically up to the district attorney on whether or not they want to press charges. Now, that NMSU basketball player is making allegations against three of his own team members that they allegedly hazed him here at the locker room at the Pan American Center, as well as at away games. Now, there is that redacted police report that details the allegations made against the three players, including false imprisonment, criminal sexual misconduct, conduct and harassment. Now the report states the players removed another team members clothing and engaged in inappropriate physical and sexual touching. Now the victim claims it has been an ongoing issue and is usually done in front of the whole team. Now I lost Cruz's defense attorney looking at the police report explaining that all three suspects were grouped together for all the allegations, but they may not all have taken part in each one. Criminal sexual contact there was touching of, um, of a body part that he obviously did not give consent. So it would also depend on who um, did that, um, out, who committed that allegation because not necessarily each person partook in every one of those um, and, and part of those felonies, right? 
Now, according to the NCAA website on hazing, it lists national data that 74% of student athletes experience at least one form of hazing while in college. And NMSU Chancellor Dan Arvisu did release a statement saying that hazing has become part of an organization's culture and is left unchecked. It's something that we simply cannot tolerate. Now, that victim wanting to remain anonymous and that defense attorney that I did speak with saying that that police report being redacted the way it is is pretty typical in these types of cases. Reporting live from Las Cruces, Shelby Cap, KTSM 9 News.